As our next speaker, we have uh, Jingyang Li here uh, talking about uh, quantum parameterized complexity. Um, once we have started the Zoom sharing. Okay, yeah, thanks. Great. Thanks for the introduction, and today I'm going to talk about quantum parameterized complexity. Uh, my name is Xingjie, and, uh, and uh, this work is based on, uh, this talk is based on the work with Michael, Zhenfeng, Luke, and uh, Mauro. Okay. Uh, so under to understand what is uh, uh, parameterized complexity, let's start, uh, let's set our mind back to the start of the classical complexity. Uh, the central question of classical complexity is the P versus NP problem. And in his seminal work, Richard Karp, he listed and proved 21 NP complete problems. To name a few, there are the circuit set problems, the knapsack problem, and the vertex cover problems, and so on. Uh, so we would like to ask the following question. Are they of the same hardness? Uh, you might say yes, because they are all NP complete problems. Uh, however, if you take a closer look at these problems, you will find that uh, they are made different in many ways. For example, uh, the, for the knapsack problem, you will have a dynamic programming algorithm, which you would learn from any algorithm class. And uh, for other two problems, uh, they actually doesn't have such algorithms. Uh, so the target of the so the problem here is that uh, when we studying about the P and the NP problems, uh, the only parameter we are considering about is the problem size. However, you can see that for the knapsack problem, there are actually more than one parameter than the problem size. There are the weight of the, uh, the knapsack and there's many other parameters. So the target of parameterized complexity is to give a more fine-grained uh, characterization of these problems. So in the parameterized complexity, you will see that uh, these problems will separate into different uh, complexity classes. Okay, uh, so I assume many of you might, might not be familiar with uh, the parameterized complexity theory. So in this talk, I will first introduce you to some classical results of a parameterized complexity. Then I will give you the definitions of the quantum version of a parameterized complexity theory, which is uh, a part of our work. And finally, we studied a specific problem called the weighted local Hamiltonian problem, and we studied its parameterized complexity. Okay, so in parameterized complexity, we study the following parameterized problem. So we uh, accept the original problem we are considering, that is the L here. We also have a, a function k from sigma star to the natural number, which we call is a parameterization of this problem L. And uh, so there are some examples. For example, deciding whether a graph G has a click of size at least k. So here, the graph G, you can think of it as the original problem. And the k here, will, you can, the constant k here, you can think as the parameterization of this problem. And similarly, deciding whether graph G has a vertex cover of size at most k, you can also think it is a parameterized version of the vertex cover problem. And so in the following talk, we will use n to characterize the problem size. So why do we study these problems? Uh, I will give reasons from theory and practice perspectives. From a theory perspective, it will provide a fine-grained characterization for different problems. And it will lead to, lead to a, a whole new different hierarchies, and it will build connections between uh, fine-grained complexity theory and other parts of the complexity theory. And uh, for practice, uh, many actual problems, like in the chip design, the DNA sequencing, and the robotics, uh, they, they all often have many parameters, but uh, when we are designing the algorithm, we are actually interested in subset of these parameters. Okay, so this is a, a world which uh, you might be familiar with. It's a classical complexity theory. You have the P complexity class and you have the NP complexity class. Uh, and so um, you can see that um, for the click problem and the vertex cover problems, they are all NP complete problems. So they all fall into the uh, NP class here. However, after you parameterize the, these problems, they will fall into a, a whole new different hierarchies, which we call the W hierarchy. And the, for, the, for example, the vertex cover, after you parameterize it, it will fall into uh, the FPT, which you can think as the analog of P in the parameterized complexity world. And uh, for uh, the click problem, it will fall into a class called uh, W1. And uh, there are a whole new whole W hierarchy for these different parameterized classes. 
Okay, so let's introduce what are these classes already about. Uh, so, uh, so the basic class of parameterized complexity is called a fixed parameter tractable, which is FET in short. So we say a problem is in FET it, if it has an algorithm with running time O F K, where F is some computable function times poly n. So we call it the FET algorithm. So you can see that from the definition, in a, when we are in a small fixed K regime, these problems are actually efficiently solvable. So you can think it's an analog of P in the parameterized complexity theory. Uh, for example, the k vertex cover problem, it has a 2 to the k times poly n time algorithm, so it is in FET. And uh, the basic reduction for the parameterized complexity theory is the FET reductions. So you would use the an FET algorithm to transform one problem instance to another one, just like the Karp's reduction. And, uh, to no and uh, you should notice that uh, in, the in the transformation, you would uh, the new parameterization of your problem would be some function g g to the k g of the k, which is only uh, which is independent of the problem size n. So this is the basic class of the parameterized complexity. And uh, unlike the k vertex cover problem, there is no known FT algorithm for the k click problem, uh, and the trivial enumeration algorithm would run in k squared times the n to the k time. So n to the k, you can think it as the exponential time uh, in parameterized complexity theory. Uh, and so, uh, so like the three set problem, here we would use the uh, k-click problem as a, prob as a complete problem for one param parameterized complexity class, which we would call it as W1. So this is one uh, uh, complete problem. And uh, there are other W1 complete problems which would, for example, the weight K three set problem. That is, we decide whether you have a three set instance that has a Hamming weight K certificate. And uh, to define the whole W hierarchy, we would consider the following circuit satisfiability problem. Uh, that is, we consider the following the weft T circuit sat satisfiability. So a circuit weft is a maximum number of unbounded fan gates on any path of a Boolean circuit C. Uh, so this is the circuit definition of circuit weft. And you are asked to find a, a uh, witness with Hamming weight K a certificate uh, to that satisfies this circuit. So uh, for general WT, we define it as the problems that can be FET reduced to the problems beyond. So you would ask us, what will happen if W1 equals FET? Are there any consequences? So yeah, and th there is consequences, and uh, it links to the uh, fine grain complexity problem. And uh, there is a famous uh, ex hypothesis in the fine grain complexity that is the exponential time hypothesis, which says that you doesn't have a sub-exponential sub time algorithm that decides whether a three-set instance. And uh, so we have the following theorem. If W1 equals FET, then this e exponential time hypothesis is false. That's it from the classical parameterized complexity literature. So after introducing the uh, classical part, now we finally reach to the quantum part. Uh, and so uh, to, when you're defining the quantum parameterized complexity classes, the first idea will come to mind is that you replace every class, uh, classical algorithm in the definition by a quantum algorithm. So will that work? Uh, it turn out, turns out for many complex classes, this actually is a good definition. Uh, so here we have the basic uh, a complex class of quantum parameterized complexity, which we call it FPQT. Uh, so you just replace the uh, classical algorithm by a quantum algorithm in the definition of FPT. And uh, you just like you do when you switch to P to BQP, here we just re require it to accept with probability two over three. And uh, we also have similarly, we also have FPQT reductions for these complexity classes. However, when we are turning to proving the, uh, defining the quantum W hierarchy, uh, we would meet many, many problems. Uh, for example, so let's first try our uh, technique first that uh, we replace uh, every classical world with a quantum. So here we are trying to define a quantum circuit of weft T, and uh, we want to decide whether there exists a quantum witness, the state psi, with weight K that uh, uh, that makes the circuit accepts. 
so what is the quantum weight of the uh, what's the weight of quantum state? Uh, here we just define it as uh, this state is spanned by a uh, Hemingway K certifi certificates, just as uh, the previous talk in previous talks. Okay, but there are more problems. So one problem is that in the classical Boolean circuit, you will have uh, uh, unbounded fan out uh, wires for free. However, when you are doing a quantum uh, circuit, you will need uh, ancilla qubits to perform the fan out operations. So we'd like to say, okay, now let's, uh, where, where there, there is a fan out wire, we use a C naught gate. So will it work? Uh, actually, this gives the quantum, quantum circuit way too more power. Uh, there is a, f uh, since quantum fan out gates, they are really powerful. Uh, there is a famous result that about, uh, you can use a bounded fan-in gates and unbounded fan-out quantum gates. You could simulate uh, unbounded fan-in and gates. So by our previous definition, you will give our, the complexity class QW1 with uh, way too much power. So here, we would use classical fan-out instead. By classical fan-out, we mean that we would measure the fan-out qubit and the wiring out of measurement result. And so here now, we would define the weft uh, is defined similarly by counting the max number of unbounded, thing, unbounded end gates on any pulse. It's defined similarly. Okay, so after all these fixes, uh, we can finally define the, fun, formally define the QW hierarchy here. And uh, so here we fix the, all the problems, and uh, there's uh, one more subtlety that uh, uh, we do not have any error reduction techniques for this QW uh, for these QW classes. So we have to define a class for every uh, completeness and soundness uh, uh, parameters. So when we are defining the final class uh, QWT, we will def just define it as a union of all such completeness and soundness parameters with an inverse polynomial gap. Okay, after we define all these problems, we would like to ask, are there any natural QW1 complete problems? Like, uh, because the previous problems, you can see this, it might seem very artificial, just a generalization of classical results. Unfortunately, uh, there is no such problem that we proved to be QW1 complete. Uh, however, since the, you can see that for a weighted K three set problem, it is a W1 complete problem. So you would like to ask, so we have a weighted version of a local Hamiltonian problem. I uh, think uh, uh, it can be seen as a generalization into quantum of the three set problem. Uh, that is, uh, we want to give a global Hamiltonian problem, uh, we want to decide ground energy level. Okay, so we defined it as such problems, just as you would imagine. Uh, so we, uh, unlike the original local Hamiltonian problem, here we are only considering the weight K subspace that, uh, uh, of the qu uh, quantum states that you are considering. Uh, and for this problem, we have the following results. Uh, first, we prove that this problem is in QW1, and uh, we also give a lower bound to this problem, that uh, this problem cannot be in FPQT unless the quantum exponential time hypothesis, this, uh, this is false. And finally, we obtained some uh, partial results on proving this problem to be QW1 complete. Okay, so let's first see uh, the proof sketch of uh, uh, the weighted local Hamiltonian problem is in QW1. So it follows from these uh, four steps. Uh, so we start from this local Hamiltonian problem and we would first transform into a, a weight-preserving quantum circuit. Uh, by weight-preserving here, we, we mean that at each time slice of this uh, circuit, the weight of the quantum state is preserved. And uh, in the second step, we use the error, uh, we use some uh, uh, tools from a quantum singular value transformation to reduce the error of this uh, circuit. And in the third step, we transform uh, using, we modify Kitaev's history state construction and uh, obtain a spatially sparse local Hamiltonian. And finally, uh, by sparsity, we can transform, the, transform these Hamiltonians into a, a web to one quantum circuit and proving it is in QW1. Uh, and I will introduce, uh, uh, mainly introduce the step three here. So we would uh, transform a circuit to a sparse local Hamiltonian. Uh, by sparse, we mean that uh, uh, of each qubit, you will have only constant uh, Hamiltonian term acting on, acting on it. And uh, so 
by gen uh, in general circuits, if you directly use the uh, Kitaev's uh, history uh, state construction, which is, sh which is shown below, you will not uh, ob ob directly obtain a sparse local Hamiltonian, Hamiltonian since you can have uh, many unitaries acting on one qubit. And so here we, uh, here we would use also a layered grid circuit construction from the Olivier and by Olivier and Turho. And uh, this construction is that is in the following. So here, uh, each dot is a qubit in the new circuit. And uh, for each column, you can think as is the, as a wire in the original quantum circuit you are you are thinking about. And uh, each and uh, each row it stands for a time slice for the original quantum circuit. Uh, and uh, each block here, we mean there that is here is a unitary. Um, so the, this circuit simulates the original circuits as follows. You first initialize all the, cube, all, all the dots here and all the qubits here and to zero, and uh, then you apply the first unitary, U1, and then you swap the first, uh, uh, first layer with the, self, with the second layer, and then you apply the second unitary, U2, and then you swap, and you, you apply another unitary, and then you swap, and so on. So you can see that this circuit uh, that simulates the original circuit. Uh, and uh, if you apply Kitaev's history state construction to this circuit, you can obtain a sparse local Hamiltonian. And uh, here, we would require the circuit to be weight preserving. Is that because uh, you can see in Kitaev's uh, history state construction, if you want to obtain a constant weight, constant weight witness, uh, you would require a uh, all the components have the same weight. And uh, so here, uh, if you have a weight preserving circuit, you can, you can uh, obtain, a, you, can you can preserve this weight. Uh, okay, and then for lower bounds, uh, for putting lower bounds, uh, the main idea is that we define a quantum a miniaturized problem, so QM1. And uh, we prove that uh, the QM1 is in FEQT. If, it, if and only if the quantum exponential time hypothesis is false. And we also prove the local, weight K local Hamiltonian problem to be QM1 hard. So combining these two results together, we, have, we can obtain that uh, weighted local Hamiltonian problems cannot be in FEQ, FEQT unless uh, the quantum exponential time hypothesis is false. And finally, we try to prove the uh, local, weighted local Hamiltonian problem to be uh, QW1 complete but we face the following questions. Uh, so we prove the uh, special class, that is uh, for the frustration-free local Hamiltonians, it is complete for a special kind of web swan circuits that ends, ends with a big end gate. And so the proof sketch here, we just use the light cone arguments, uh, as you can see from the graph. Uh, so each, each wire here, it will affect only constant number of uh, circuits of, uh, uh, of qubits, since uh, are, we are considering constant depth circuits. And uh, mm, so uh, you, have, you can obtain H1, H2 for each, uh, for each wire you are, you are end, ending with. And uh, finally, you would, end, uh, you would uh, uh, add this uh, Hamiltonian's terms together to obtain your frustration-free local Hamiltonian. Uh, however, we do not even know how to deal with the circuits that with uh, uh, end with a uh, NAND gate, because uh, here in the proof, we actually rely on a special property of the end gate. That is, the end gate with the output of one, if, if and only if it, all your inputs is one. So we re rely on the, this, this fact to prove our results. Okay, so uh, there, are some, there are many op open problems in this area, since it is a brand new, brand new area. So the first problem we are considering is about is the is the weight K local Hamiltonian QW1 complete? We tried to prove that, but uh, we failed uh, due to many prob uh, technical problems. And uh, are there more natural problems for the quantum parameterized complexity? Since you can see that the weight of a quantum state, uh, is, this definition might seem artificial to many, per many, many of you. And uh, so, and are there other possible definitions for the quantum parameterized complexity? Since uh, we just uh, uh, generalized the the classical version of it, and uh, we hope you, you can, you'll be interested and uh, give some um, new results in this area. Thank you.
Yeah, thank you for the nice talk. Um, are there questions? Uh, Ivor? Um, can you comment on this uh, exponential time hypothesis? You said that your result is is the case if, if it's false, but do people expect that it's actually false? So is it like P versus MP, that sort of thing? Or, uh, or, what's, what, why, or what do people think about this hypothesis? Uh, uh, it's hard. Uh, I think it is, uh, uh, many people will believe the, this hypothesis is also true, but, uh, uh, but it, it, is a, it is a stronger hypothesis than P, not equal right. to MP, yeah, right. as you can imagine. But uh, I think many many of people would still believe this hypothesis is, is a true hypothesis. Okay, so it's a bit more like controversial uh, than P versus MP. Yes, yeah, it's, it's more controversial. Okay. <laughs> Thanks. So, do we have more questions? <laughs> yes. I uh, think you for the nice talk. Uh, so the, the parameterized complexity is motivated by the runtime of the algorithms. So. Do you, do you have some uh, can, uh, so possible candidates for QMA complete problem, which is fixed parameter quantum quantum fixed parameter tractable, but uh, so but QMA complete? Uh, well, let me think about it. Mm. Perhaps uh, I don't have such a such an such a, such a problem in mind, but I will, we will we might look at it. Yeah, I think. So, it looks like there is no more question as far as I can see. Um, I guess people are looking forward to the break <laughs> at some point. And yeah, let's thank everybody again and uh, have a nice break.